Hello again everybody. In this training video we're going to discuss two important aspects of the PTS 900 platform. The ability to set and adjust the belt pack whistle settings for each referee and as well as the actual calibration procedure which will digitally record each referee's individual whistle and program that belt pack for that official for each game. The combination of these two new features, one, the ability to customize the belt pack settings for each official, as well as using a digital sample of that referee's whistle, uh, we feel are the two of the most significant improvements to the PTS 900 uh, over the previous iterations of the precision tying system. So that's why we want to spend a little bit of time covering what the settings mean so that if you're asked to make those changes uh, in game, which can happen sometimes, especially with our college referees, and to also understand how to do the calibration procedure correctly will maximize the performance of the system in game for you. Before working with the belt pack whistle settings, or to attempt to calibrate a referee belt pack, the first thing we want to do is make sure that the belt pack is on and connected to the base station. And this is usually done by, for each of the belt packs, if you see here for belt pack 1, the green battery indicator as well as the radio signal strength indicator both suggest that the belt pack is connected. If we tap the whistle settings icon, we can get into the individual settings for each belt pack. Since belt pack 1 is on and connected, you notice that when we tap the icon, you see the two numbers, the max threshold percentage is 88, and the sensitivity level as 25. Let's take a moment to review what the two numbers in the belt pack settings mean to help you optimize these numbers for your game experience. The first number, the match percentage, sets a threshold for how close the referee's whistle in game has to match the digital sample that we take during the calibration process before the game starts. Through extensive testing by us, we have determined that the 88% number works best across all platforms, and we recommend that you do not change this number. The second of the two numbers, which is the sensitivity of the microphone, is the number that you may have to adjust depending on the game situation and the referees you have in your gym. The default setting for this number that works best for most referees is 25. However, you may find that if a referee is inadvertently stopping the clock, you may want to adjust this setting to either 26 or 27. You may also find that through our extensive testing, since we have developed a list of referees that do inadvertently stop the clock, that you may be asked to adjust those settings pre-game to the 26 or 27 number depending on which referees are coming to your gym. So now if we want to adjust the sensitivity level to a tighter number just simply tap on the icon and scroll down to the selection either 26 or 27 in this case and that will make the microphone a little less sensitive for that official. Now if you notice here when we tap on belt pack 2, if you remember that belt pack, since it was not on, you will not see any values initially when you tap on that icon. That's why we recommend that you have the belt packs on and connected before you uh, make any changes to these settings. After making the changes to the whistle settings, when you return to the main screen, you may notice that the uh, green battery beacon may flash off and on for one or perhaps all three of the belt packs if they were all on. This is actually normal and it's a sign that the changes are being uploaded to the belt packs in the field. Optimally we would like to have the changes done before the referees calibrate but if you need to make these changes after they calibrate or in game that will be fine. In this section we're going to discuss how to calibrate a referee belt pack before the game. Before we attempt to calibrate the referee belt packs, it's very important to confirm through the main screen as shown that the belt pack is actually on. 
So you can see here we have belt pack one and you see the green battery indicator and the radio strength signal indicator that say that this belt pack is on and communicating with the base station. So now to actually calibrate the belt pack we're going to go up here and select the whistle calibration icon here and you see it'll bring us up to the screen. So and the, you can see here that none of the belt packs have been calibrated yet. So we're going to attempt to calibrate belt pack one which will involve simply selecting calibrate whistle and at this moment you'll see it will go into an active listening mode. So nothing else should happen until I blow the two whistles. Now it's very important and, as, and especially if the initial calibration attempt fails most of the time it happens because the referees try to go too quickly when they calibrate the belt packs and what I mean by that is that they go beep beep real quick together we want the two whistles to have a distinct separation between them so let's watch what happens when I do this so you see here that at the conclusion of the second whistle it generates a score in this case I scored 93 which would be a passing score and again the the score results from comparing the two whistles that were blown during the calibration process and matching them up with each other. And so we want to make sure that whatever digital sample we use in the game is reproducible. That's why we blow the two whistles. So once this is completed uh, with all three belt packs, then you can hit the close button and get back to the main screen. And now you're ready for play. Just to review some helpful tips to get the calibration performed correctly before each night. First of all, it's important that each official needs to calibrate their belt pack for each game. We have a lot of different whistle types that are being used out there now, and so we need to make sure that when official A shows up for your game that they do the calibration for that belt pack. We want to make sure when they do the calibration that they have the microphone in the lanyard the same as game conditions. We know that some referees like to come out onto the court for that initial warm-up uh, not being fully dressed and have the belt pack in their pocket. So we want them to at least put that microphone in the lanyard so that when they do the calibration it's as close to game conditions as possible. Make sure that they blow the two whistle blasts and that they have the separation that we discussed between the two whistles and we want the referees to be blowing the whistle as close to game conditions as possible and sometimes that means if they hold the whistle in the side of their mouth during the game and kind of blow a less than solid blast we want them to try to reproduce that as I've mentioned several times already making sure we have that one to two second pause between the two calibration whistles and that the referees are not rushing through that will ensure that we get a proper calibration the first time. Again, under the banner of game conditions, uh, we also want to discourage the referees from cupping the whistle, putting their hand over it to try to minimize blowing the whistle in the ear of the players that are warming up around them. I know that's a natural tendency, but we want to avoid that if possible. Our target minimum passing score is a 93. Um, however, if the referee is done it the calibration two or three times and still scoring at 89 uh, we're probably better served to just let them go um, the system will probably work fine but um, again uh, that's the number we want to shoot for uh, some of the old timers that have been around the system for a while uh, we used to check the bell packs working simply by blowing a puff of air into the microphone and they'd see the clock stop just remind them that does that does not work anymore they need to do the calibration to set the belt pack up properly for the game. And if you have any problems with the belt pack not calibrating at all, uh, first of all, make sure it's turned on, and also make sure you have the right belt pack number selected, uh, both for the referee and both in your uh, calibration. So hopefully these uh, tips will help you get the calibration done for all three of them within 30 seconds and move on to the game. For any additional questions about the contents of this presentation, please use the contact information shown above. We thank you again for your support of Precision Time.